It's October 19th, 2018, and we are heading to Facebook. This is a really big deal. We're going to sit down with Mark Zuckerberg, who rarely sits down for interviews. Facebook years are like dog years. A lot happens in a little time. In the months since I first walked through these doors, Nearly 50 million Facebook users have been targeted by hackers. The largest security breach in Facebook history. Facebook on the defensive today. And we'll get to all that later. But for now, back to Facebook and what you need to know about an interview with Mark Zuckerberg. It's so good. cold. First, he likes a room cold, very cold. Turn the cameras around and you'll see his people on the other side. They're taking notes, scribbling furiously, keeping time. They know that the stakes are high these days. The whole world seems to be watching. And that's Facebook in this current moment. Thank you for coming Massively out. influential. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg under fire. In flux. The biggest security breach in the history of Facebook. And controversial. But to fully understand Facebook up today, you have to go back to the beginning. Hi, I'm Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, an online social directory. That was really good. Just stare in the camera and just give it a quirky little smile. <laughs> quirky little. Thanks. The early days of Facebook were a very scrappy time. There have been some constants through the years here. The mission of the company of connecting people and bringing people together, that really has informed some of the most important decisions that, that we've made. You're going to hear this phrase, the mission, quite a bit. Mark's mission is the mantra at Facebook. Our mission has really always been to connect the world. We are a mission-driven company. Our mission is to connect everyone in the world. Connect, connect. We can connect the whole world. It was in the company's DNA from the beginning. And I think the people who have been drawn to this company over the years are people who really care about that. If you're an employee, you hear it the moment you walk through the door. You're almost indoctrinated into it. He believed in the mission of Facebook to help people share and be more connected, and I wanted to follow him. It just felt so different from anything I'd done before. Mark had this vision that everyone could be connected, and that was pretty exciting. What's on your mind? Inside Facebook headquarters, that message to build out the mission is everywhere. Inspirational quote posters line the walls with delicate phrases fine-tuned to Facebook's current state. Some call it almost even like a cult. Is this the cult of Mark Zuckerberg? I think uh, a cult of personality is a little bit more kind of a Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, Bill Clinton territory. Mike Hoflinger worked at Facebook for six and a half years. I think cult of mission is what Facebook is, and that is still very much around, and that's why people look to join Facebook. The full formal mission statement is going to be... The mission is clear, as is one other thing. To understand Facebook at 15, you have to understand its DNA. And its DNA is Mark Zuckerberg. After just spending his entire childhood growing up with three sisters, he's like, I just got to connect with other people. <laughs> Mark's older sister, Randy, rarely gives interviews about her brother and Facebook. We were always inventing. We we're always collaborating. We we're always like looking for any technology we could find and using it to just, you know, create something bigger. Yay. What? I got accepted. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> All right! Creating solutions to problems yet to be seen was in the Zuckerberg blood and would eventually morph into the mission when Mark left home. We are now focusing on one of the newest members of Harvard's class of 2006. Its roots were actually quite trivial and controversial. Mark's first project at Harvard was FaceMash. It was a hot or not style site he created by hacking pictures of classmates from Harvard's dormitory ID files. People could rank you know, to see two pictures of people who are students at Harvard and vote for which one was more attractive. And then this site then produced a list of the most attractive people in, at Harvard ranked. Business Insider Global Editor-in-Chief Nicholas Carlson. Obviously very offensive and people got very upset for it and Zuckerberg was hauled in front of the disciplinary board at Harvard and admonished for this. But at the same time, that project revealed that Zuckerberg completely understood what people wanted to do in social media. What do you mean? What I mean is, is that 
people, when they voted, they ended up voting on average 44 times, which means they were like addicted to the site. Programming a platform that played into the best and worst of human impulses, that became familiar later. But in the meantime, it didn't take long for Harvard to shut down the site. Mark actually became a celebrity of sorts on campus. I was like, oh, Mark, like, you know, you kind of probably put that out there and didn't really think it through that well. But I mean, he always saw a need for something and his gut instinct was always like, let's get this out there and then make it perfect. This idea of creating and breaking in the name of connecting would be a theme that would only amplify a decade later as the stakes got higher. But 15 years ago at Harvard, it motivated Zuckerberg's next life-changing creation. Somewhere along one of these pathways might have been where the idea for Facebook started. Harry Lewis was Mark's computer science professor and a dean at Harvard. When Mark and every other student arrived on campus every fall, they were handed a Facebook. It's literally a book of faces and names and, you know, uh, hometowns, basically, that's all it is. There were some computer science students who were eager to put, you know, the Facebook online. This was not necessarily a simple thing to do, and then somebody did it anyway, right, without our, without our involvement. That somebody? Mark Zuckerberg. He walked up to the registrar's office, can I help you and volunteer as a student to digitize this? Huh. And they just said no. And I think it was almost a little bit of like, well, maybe you just don't get what I mean, so let me just go home and do it and show you. I want to meet that person who said no and give them a hug because if they had, you know, had the, the business foresight to say yes, like none of this would have ever been created. February 4th, 2004, Facebook went live. Within 24 hours, an estimated 1,200 students had signed up. Within months, they had 100,000 users. A pretty meteoric rise. Who knows where we're going next? Mark's mission was born. He was just 19 years old. We're hoping to have many more universities by the fall, hopefully over 100 or 200. And doing that would require a move to the epicenter of tech, Silicon Valley, where Mark found more space, more money, and more controversy. What was the deciding factor for leaving Harvard? Well, I made Facebook. <laughs> Summer 2004, Mark and his co-founder Dustin Moskovitz left Cambridge and moved to Palo Alto. At the time, the site was exploding, a million users, and the company had little money in the bank. So the crew was making the Silicon Valley venture capital circuit in their own way. You hear these famous stories of Zuckerberg and his team going to VCs in their pajamas and showing up late and being kind of rude. He was very like, I'm young, rules are for adults, get to work late, just do your thing, code it, hack it. And over time, you know, they used to have a sign on the wall which is like, move fast and break things. And it's like, now it says like, move carefully and don't break things. Now they're in such a delicate point. Like, <laughs> don't break things. If you break things, sometimes you break the country. 